Trump has officially signed the tax bill at a Lukey event in the Oval Office. But what is the media not telling you in this episode of The Movement with special guest, expert Sandy Botkin, author of Lawyer Taxes Big Time, here with the Money Smart Guy. For those of you who join us on Facebook Live, watching this on YouTube, thanks for joining us, guys. Welcome to the show. Sandy Botkin, Esquire, CPA, former IRS attorney and senior tax law specialist and uh, the tax was it the tax education advisor at TaxBot. Did I say that? All right. Awesome. Sandy, thanks for uh, thanks for thanks for joining us on the show. We need we need to break this stuff down, buddy. Yeah, we sure do. There's a lot to it. Yeah. So a lot of our guys are entrepreneurs. A lot of our guys are spying entrepreneurs. Some guys transitioning from military into entrepreneurship. So, you know, a couple of things that I'm seeing here. Uh, Trump uh, passed the bill and a lot a lot of positive stuff is going on. Uh, for example, latest company to take a huge change as a result of the tax bill is Comcast. Comcast is awarding a thousand thousand dollar bonuses to more than one hundred thousand employees. That's a hundred million dollars. Uh, AT and T, uh, they're paying a thousand to two hundred thousand employees. That's two hundred million dollars going to employees. Uh, Three hundred million dollars for Boeing is going to charity training and education infrastructure. Uh, Fifth Third Bank is giving its uh, uh, is. Uh, hourly wage for employees is increasing to 15 bucks an hour and contrib- contributing a uh, thousand, distributing a thousand dollar bonus to 13,500 employees. That's 13, four, 13.5 million going to people at uh, Field Third Bank. Wells Fargo increasing also to 15 bucks per hour, donating $400 million to community and nonprofit organizations. People are calling this the Trump effect. Sandy, what's the real deal here, buddy? Well, first of all, some of the companies that you're mentioning. Uh, they want something from the government. They want to prove mergers like AT&T is a good example of that. Uh, yeah, they're giving out $200 million in, in benefits. What they're not telling you is they're also making an extra $2 billion as a result of a tax cut. So there's a lot of that. Um, I don't think you're going to see, believe it or not, most of that in most companies. They interviewed 300 CEOs, 250 CEOs, and they found the vast majority of them will not be giving out bonuses, will not be hiring. I'll tell you, what, what are they going to do with that money? Buy their stock back. Is that what they're doing? That's correct. Wow. So that's one of the reasons why, uh, uh, plus, of course, the tax cut for corporations. That's one of the reasons why you're seeing the, cor- the stock market go ballistic. Uh, let's, let's talk about small business for a minute here, and then we sure. can talk about other things. Yep. Many of you may have heard that this is just this wonderful deal for small business people and, and for business in general, and, and everything is going to be rah-rah. And the Republic, if you listen to the Republicans, man, this thing is going to be the best thing since sliced pumpernickel bread, and it's going to turbocharge the economy, and everything's going to do great. Uh, if you listen to Democrats, this is the biggest scam in history, without question. So what's the right answer? The answer is they're both wrong. It's probably somewhere in between. And you're a Republican, Sandy, That's right? That's correct. That is correct. Uh, here's the deal, the way it works. There, there's, there's good and bad to this tax law. The main bad thing that I that I don't like about it, and there's a couple bad things, but the main bad thing, and then I'll get mostly good, and then I'll get into some of the other negatives, sure. is very simple. If I were to say to you, Matt, that I'm going to waive somewhere between, depending on your income, somewhere between $200 and $50,000 or more every year in your taxes for the next five years, I'm going to take my magic wand and I'm going to cut that out, would you be happy? Yeah. You'd be jumping for joy. Yeah, absolutely. But what if I said at the end of five years, oh, yeah, by the way, you know that money I saved you? You got to pay it back, and you also have to give me interest. Nah, now how happy are you? No, nah, not very happy at all. Not happy at all. You'd probably go bankrupt. Some, some people go bankrupt on this situation. And that's really what's going on here. This is being funded by a minimum of a $1.5 trillion deficit. And for a number of reasons that I'll get into, it could be substantially more. Uh, the Republicans would like you to believe that this is the trickle down effect per se, or they want to call it the Trump effect that, but this is really, this is old Republican policy. This isn't Trump. This is the Republican policy to, if you, if you, if you incur, give enough money back to corporations and business, it'll sort of trickle down in terms of more hiring and more, um, bonuses. The problem is that that has never worked in history. Never. They tried it during the Reagan administration. There was huge deficits. They tried it in Kansas where they gave special discounts. For people who are for pass through entities, that didn't work. It has never worked in history. What happens is it doesn't make up 
for the deficits that they have to create. Yeah, it does create some new jobs. It does create some more revenue, but it doesn't create enough to warrant the deficit changes. That's the problem. And that has been true throughout history. So I mean, I'm, I wish I, there was a line on Las Vegas I could take a bet on this deal. Uh, but anyway. Oh, I think we lost you. Sandy, one second. I think we lost you for a second. The, the connection there. No, uh, something dropped. Something dropped there. One second. And uh, why don't we take this a quick moment as uh, Sandy Sandy's resetting his uh, computer over there. Thank you guys for joining us here on Money Smart Guy on Facebook. And for those of you watching this as a replay uh, as well, thank you for joining us. For those of you watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. We are moving to help more people transform the way they think, feel, manage, and reach towards financial independence by understanding the rules in the money game, winning the money game. Uh, for those of you that's following us on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, thank you for your comments. Uh, we appreciate you guys uh, being part of our community. Sandy's going to be coming right back here in a moment. Uh, in the meantime, I want you guys to know we're going to be taking your questions. We want your insight. We want to know what you guys are thinking about uh, what this is really uh, meaning for you and uh, for your pocketbook. And uh, let's bring Sandy back here to the broadcast. Three, two, one. Sandy, you're back with us. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Go for it, brother. Okay. Sometimes okay. some of these webinars, they, they disconnect the sound. I don't know why that happens, but it just happens at times. But you're, okay. you're, you're sounding good. By the way, we, we've got a lot of people joining us right now, uh, Sandy. Um, uh, a lot of people are dropping comments right now. Uh, and I just want to mention to everybody, make sure you drop your questions uh, towards the end of this broadcast. Uh, we're going to be taking your questions. You're going to hear it directly from Sandy Bodkin, CPA, Esquire, author of the book, Lower Your Tax. This is my annual book. And uh, we're going to pick, by the way, why don't we do this? For those of you sharing this this uh, this live video, I'd like to choose three of you guys, one, two, three, three of you guys who are sharing this video, and I want to send you Sandy's book on me. We're going to send it directly from Amazon because I want to, I want to make sure it counts to Sandy on the uh, New York Times bestseller type of list, type, uh, type of uh, indicators. But I want you to make sure you get this book, Lower Your Taxes, big time as a gift for the Money Smart Guy for sharing this video. We'll be picking three winners here in a moment. Okay, Sandy. Back to you. All right, let's do it fast before I get disconnected here. <laughs> we got yeah, to, yeah. have to restart it. All right. First of all, there will be lower tax rates. Uh, true. Most of the rates go to the top 3% of the country. There's no question that that is true. In addition, everyone, though, is, or not everyone, but most people are going to see a tax reduction as a result of their federal taxes. That is also true. The only people that probably won't see a tax reduction are those living in, in high tax states with a lot of interest, a lot of property taxes, state income taxes, things like that, because some of that gets just like state income tax gets removed and so on. If you have a lot of itemized deductions, you're going to be hit as well. But for the most part, I would say 80% of all households are going to see a tax cut. You will see something like that. In addition, small business gets an, another big benefit. In fact, it almost pays to be in business and forget about being an employee, quit your job and become a, an independent contractor. And this is true whether you're a contractor, an LLC, an S Corp, you're all going to get benefits. If you're a regular corporation, they're going to drop the rates from 35 to 21 percent, which is a tremendous cut. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is that there's going to be a lot of gaming of the system. People are going to quit their job. They're going to try to be treated as independent contractors, form a corporation, and then they'll, and they'll, they won't pay the 37 percent. They'll pay only 21. So that's probably what you're going to see here. Uh, the second uh, thing you're going to get is that if you're an S-Corp or a sole proprietor or an LLC, you'll be getting a deduction, a special deduction equal to approximately 20% of your taxable income. So they're actually going to remove 20% of your taxable income from being taxed. And that's another big benefit that self-employed people and S-corps and other we call pass-through entities will get. Right. Uh, there are some limits on that. For example, if you're a service business, you're not treated quite as well. And if you're not service business, so if you're a lawyer or a doctor or a, a consultant, uh, you're not, it's not quite as good as it would be if you're a manufacturer or something like that. But generally, that's the rule. Okay. So why, so with all these good things, then why isn't, why am I not saying this is just fabulous for business? There's no negative because there's a lot of things people aren't being told. And let me give you a couple of things you're never going to see in the media. I promise. Here's the juice. The first, the first thing that you're not hearing is that yes, federal taxes will go down, but for most people, state income taxes will go up. Because like, the state, like yeah, right, like Illinois, 
because the state taxes you pretty much on the same deductions that the federal has for itemized deductions and so on, uh, that they usually give lower exemptions and things like that. They have their own rules. But the problem is, so the deduct deductions are being, some deductions are being eliminated, but the state hasn't reduced their rates. So you got lower deductions, higher taxable income, and you got the same rates. So probably most people will see their state income tax go up and help eat up in some of that federal tax cut. Gotcha. The second thing they're going to see is some business deductions have been eliminated, not to mention uh, some fringe benefits for employees have been eliminated. Well, that'll mean more Social Security taxes. So FICA taxes are going to go up a little bit. So between those two, that will take away some of the benefit of the federal tax cut. It's kind of neutralizing. the Not neutralizing, but some of it. Gotcha. Now, there were some anti-business legislation passed that I want to share with everyone that you're never going to hear. I, I've never seen this on any TV show or a newspaper, and I want to get this out because most people don't know it even exists. exists. Somebody said, we're glad we're in Texas. That's right. If you're in a tax-free state, you really come out ahead on the deal, which is one reason why, by the way, I moved to Florida, by the way, folks. By the way, so um, the, the, the tax, income tax-free states are uh, uh, Florida. Uh, there's a couple of them. There's Florida. There's Texas. There's um, Nevada. Alaska. There's Nevada. I think there's like a state, of, a state of Washington or Oregon, one of those two, and, and it's one other, I think. But th anyway, but those are the tax-free states. Now, here are the problems that you never hear of. The first big problem is that small business doesn't advertise on big events like World Series and Olympics and uh, Super Bowl. In fact, most of them don't even advertise on TV because of the high rates. Right. How does a small business market? Belly to belly. We sit down. We have, we have a, a lunch. We talk with the person. Maybe we'll have, play golf with a person, talk business. That's the way small business markets. And the government has known this. So we were able to write off our meals and entertainment for probably 100 years, since the beginning of the tax code. Yeah. So we, which and is I got a whole chapter on that. Chapter two. How That's right. That? Yep. Chapter two here. The problem is that as a result of the new tax, ref, tax uh, law, they've eliminated most meals and entertainment. So those no. belly to belly top marketing and the golfing and all the, and the plays and the shows, all of that gets eliminated. In, now the, you can, in, an, in a new tax bill, it gets eliminated. That's correct. Oh, man. So that really hurts small business people, particularly if you're a new and upcoming small business person, because you're still going to market that way. You're just not going to be able to write it off. That's, Andy, the, that's one problem. I've been doing this for 18 years. I've been always able to write off my Starbucks, my cigars, uh, lunch. Well, cigars might be a little much, unless you give them a <laughs> but, but By the way, but you raise a good point. Business gifts, however, are still left into the code. Okay. Uh, if, if you serve food at a sales presentation, that's deductible. If it's like an opportunity meeting, that's deductible. So if you have a sales presentation where you're serving food, it is deductible. That's not considered entertainment. So be advised if that's true if it's in your home. That's true if you have a little uh, seminar in a hotel. It's still deductible. Right. I'm definitely but, advised. But that's you. one thing that's negative for small business. And, and I'm very surprised that actually passed. It's also going to hurt restaurants. It's going to hurt golf clubs. It's going to hurt theater it's going to, it's also going to hurt those kind of businesses so that's one that's one problem with the tax law and for small business the second problem which is more subtle but it's it's a bigger problem and that is right now if you're in business you can deduct if your business generates a loss and I'll be honest with you when you first start a business that was true for me that probably I don't know if it's true for you but it's true for a lot of other people when you first start a business you might have a loss you, you may not have a profit the first year or year two well, the government was the biggest bookie in North America in that they subsidized your business, okay? So if your business had a loss, the way they subsidize you is you can use that loss against any form of income you have, like your spouse's earnings, your rent, your, your other employee earnings, whatever. And if the loss exceeds those earnings, maybe you don't even have earnings. Maybe you just write, write into business like I did. Then you can carry back the loss two years and actually get a refund from the federal and state government for the last two years of taxes that you pay. Or carry forward the business 20 years for the losses 20 years. Here's what the new tax law did. They got rid of the carry back of losses. That's a major, major problem for upcoming small businesses. That really is because they need those losses immediately, not in the future, a year from now, but immediately to help subsidize them. So that is definitely an anti-small business provision. Because because Trump, when when his uh, Taj Mahal casino failed in Atlantic City, he was able to take some of those losses and 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 carry back those to. Oh, he did quite right. He went. The, I think they went bankruptcy or whatever. There's special rules on that. But yes, they they were able to take losses on that as co companies. But that's that's another point. We'll get into that later on. Okay. We have time. 
But that really hurts new and upcoming small businesses tremendously. Because when they're a small business and you first start off, I'm not talking about somebody like you or me, but when you first start off, you need those. If those law, if you're having a loss, you need that cash influx as soon as you can. You don't need it a year and a half from now and carry it over into the future. So that's another major disadvantage for small business. Carry back. Correct. The third major disadvantage of small business is something that's a lot more subtle, but when it hits you, it's a disaster. And that is this. You, you can, if you run your business correctly, like a business, which is the way most people should, you can take your losses against any form of income you have, and now you can carry it forward indefinitely to the future. Sure. If, on the other hand, you start a business, you remember, you're a brand new business person, you start a business. You don't know that much. What do you know? You, you, you have, you're learning. And you don't do it right. Maybe you don't have the right records. Maybe you don't have a good tax tracker like TaxBot. Maybe you don't, um, you, you didn't run it quite correctly. So it doesn't rise to the level of a business. And that sometimes happens with, with, with endeavors that have a lot of social things like, um, network marketing, uh, raising dogs, horses, horse racing, uh, consulting. There's, there's a social element to all of that. So if you didn't run your business correctly, which means you didn't go to an accountant, you didn't tell you exactly what to do, you didn't do it just right, mm -hmm. then you could have somebody said, I've been there, okay? Well, and here's what happens. Under the old law, if you had deductions, you can take those deductions, at your, you're considered a hobby. And if you're a hobby, you don't get losses. But at least if you have any deductions, you claim them as a miscellaneous itemized deduction, and you can use those deductions against any income you have from the hobby. So there's no gain, no loss. You can use those deductions against the income. Under the new tax law, if you're deemed to be a hobby, let's say IRS audits you and you're a hobby, they completely disallow all your deductions as a hobby because you no longer are there miscellaneous itemized deductions and you're taxed on the income. So not only do you have a loss, but you're paying tax on your income. This is going to dis literally destroy small businesses that don't do it right. Got it. It's a huge potential thing that can bite them big time in the rear. Gotcha. So losses, okay. from, a losses from a hobby then. That's correct. Losses and deductions, not just losses, deductions. deductions. So you're taxing your gross income, but you get no deduction because they're eliminating the miscellaneous itemized deductions. Got it. That's a big, big deal. Okay. Do I, do they offset the, the reduction in tax rates and the other 20% deduction they give you? Maybe, maybe not, but it's a real negative. Those three things for small business. Wow. So these are the things that the media isn't talking about. No. Have you ever heard these things on TV? No, no. You haven't heard about the elimination of meals and entertainment. You haven't heard about the elimination of the possible hobby loss deductions completely. I mean, you haven't heard about a lot of these things. Why the carry back doesn't hurt that's, small business. They're not talking a, about it. That's a big one. <laughs> that's a big, that's a big one. one. Yeah. And that's, I don't know if it's because the, the, there's a conspiracy of silence in the media or there's, there's dumb people. I don't know. But for some reason, nobody's talking about this. Gotcha. So say what, what's some of the, then what's some of the things then we can do? So we've got to make an adjustment. So I, for example, I got to make an adjustment that the meals entertainment deduction is, is gone. The carry bag is gone. So how do we make these adjustments? How do we, how do we, how, well, how are we getting compliant? The, the good news, if you're if my book, lower your taxes big time, other than the chapter on entertainment and, and maybe one or two fringe benefits, the good news is most of them are still in existence. You can still claim a home office deduction, for example. You yep. can still deduct meals for seminars. You can, st and the automobile deduction has gone up enormously. One thing Congress has done is they've greatly beefed up the automobile deduction where they used to limit you. There were some real limits for some reason. I don't know why Congress for years has limited the automobile deduction, but they have. They put, they put up, they gave you a good deduction in the first year of about 13,360 maximum for depreciation. And then they limited the depreciation each year thereafter. I think it was 5100 in the second year, 3650 in the third year, and then $1,875 every year thereafter until you write it off. Right. Well, under the new tax law, uh, the first year they, they increased it to 10000 So it's a little less than what they give you under the old rule. But in years two, three, four, and thereafter, they've tripled the amount of depreciation you're allowed. So, for really? example, in year two, instead of $5,100, they are giving you 16000 In year three... They, instead of giving you uh, 3700 or something like that, they give you uh, 9700 And in years four through however long it takes to write off that Mercedes, instead of 1875 they give you 5700 So it's dramatically, automobile has been dramatically improved. Again, nobody's telling you that either. Yeah. In addition to that, they're now giving you 100% bonus depreciation. Now, what that means, I want you to think about this. What that means is that in many, uh, you can not only take 
regular depreciation, but then you could write off 100 percent of what's left over. <laughs> so which is which which uh, now for you, for example, let's say sports. There are some big winners here. If you buy a new or used qualifying truck, you can write off 100 percent of the new or used qualifying truck to the extent it's used for business. 100 percent. Let, so let's break that down. Let's say let's say I'm out there because I remember when I came out the Marine Corps, I bought a uh, 1997 used Nissan Maxima for like I think it was like 10 grand. So so let's I'm just using these small numbers. So for ten thousand dollars, well, the Nissan Maxima doesn't work out as well because the, but you no, know, I but the new laws, yes, it's actually pretty good. You could probably depreciate the Nissan Maxima and write off the whole thing in probably two years. So the whole the the, the ten thousand dollars. That's correct. Even if, I, even, if I, even if I financed it. You would you would get you would get yes even if you finance it financing it makes no difference so you would get twenty five percent write off uh, in the first year of the ten thousand there's a limit based on each year the next year you get thirty two percent of the ten thousand up to sixteen thousand the next year you get I think it's another twenty five percent up to ninety seven hundred and so on if you buy a brand new or used truck however qualifying truck and the qualifying truck means one that weighs over has a gross vehicle weight of over six thousand pounds and it doesn't have rear seating. You can write off the whole thing, 100% of the business use. I think 100%. a lot of our friends in Texas would love to hear that. <laughs> like an F-150, 100%. Now, what else benefits is SUVs. If you buy yourself a new SUV, 100% of the business use can be written off. It's equal to that of a truck. If you buy a used SUV, you're limited to 25000 of the business use plus regular depreciation. So it's not quite as good, but it's still decent. $25,000 or 25000 yes. The do Dollars. Dollars. Of yeah. the business use. So new SUVs, qualifying trucks come out really well under the new tax law. I love it. Okay. So for those of you guys out there that have a uh, desire to buy a new vehicle next year, this is an incentive for you guys based on this new Trump tax bill to go out. Maybe this that's. This is the do. real win. This is a major win for small business with regard to the automobile. And, and, the and Bobby, you get that deduction even if you buy it in December. Let me give you a good example. Right now, it's, I don't know what it is, it's late December. Let's say on December 26th, you buy yourself a new qualifying truck. You use it from the 26th of a 20 to the 30th, 100% for business. You just make sure that all you do is use it for business. Therefore, you can write off 100% of that, of that truck, even though you've only had it for four days. Wow. Okay? Wow. But, but, it's all based on business use to total use. I, I, I got to make sure my wife didn't hear that because she, she's been <laughs> wanting to buy this new Bentley, the new uh, Bentley Bataglia. Uh, well, you got to meet the rules. It's got to meet the qualifying truck rules or qualifying SUV rules. Now, an SUV is like a truck, except it has carries passengers. Correct. So it has to have a gross vehicle weight of over 6,000 pounds. It has a truck chassis, and it has to carry passengers. Now you come under the SUV rules. And if it's a new SUV, you get that nice 100% bonus depreciation next year. So hold off buying until next year, and you'll get all that nice write-off. Got it. You know, there's, there's, a question, there's a question from Jacob Barajas. He goes, I brought a brand-new 2017 370Z Nismo. I don't think that's a truck, though. I think it's a car. Would they qualify? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I've never seen it. I have no idea what it is. If it has a truck chassis, a gross vehicle weight of 6,000 pounds or more, um, it, if it's a truck, it has to have at least a six-foot cargo area. If it's a, if it's a, um, if it's a SUV, it has to have, it could have, rear, it have rear seating. And then you can run off 100%. Now, somebody was asking me about electric vehicles yeah because these tesla my, my, my man uh, jose gaitan is a big tesla okay this yeah. year the government gives you a tax credit which is a yummy dollar for dollar reduction in your taxes depending on the size of the vehicle and the and the cost of the vehicle of anywhere between thirty five hundred and seventy five hundred dollars tax credit that actually reduces your taxes that's better than deduction but it's only limited to seventy five hundred so if you get the big suv you're limited to seventy five hundred oh it's a sports car okay I didn't know what that was. I don't. I don't know. But I don't. Yeah, I drive the cars too much. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's fine for the electric cars. Starting next year, they don't have that tax credit, so electric cars will not be getting the tax credit anymore. Next year. Next year. Wow. That is correct. So you, uh, now, supposedly, there's going to be all kinds of fixes. This this tax bill is going to have a bunch of fixes. You know, any legislation that's rammed through the public through Congress in the middle of the night, like a like a thief. Hmm. There's going to be things wrong with it, all right? When there's not a lot of hearings, there's going to be problems that they're going to find, okay? For example, gambling. This is something that, you know, the, the Congress fixed gambling. They added expenses to all your losses in one thing. What they, but, but what they didn't anticipate is that gambling losses are deductible as a miscellaneous itemized deduction. So if you gamble, let's say you go to Las Vegas, you used to be able to take gambling losses against gambling earnings. Now, because it's an itemized deduction and a miscellaneous itemized deduction, 
it's eliminated. So effectively, you're taxed on your income. You get no deductions for gambling, zero, even though you lost money. So I mean, as I said, there's a, there's a lot of unanticipated uh, things that are going to go on with this tax law because there wasn't a lot of hearing. There, was, there wasn't a lot of debate. They didn't bring in the, the CPAs and say, hey, here's what's wrong here. Here's what we think is complicated, what we can't enforce. They didn't do that. They just said, oh, we know what's best for the American public, so we're going to ram it through. And that's what happened. Now, Sandy, once they do find these problems, what's the process in our legislation system for them to, I don't know, make amendments to the tax well, bill? Well, the House, the House will come out with what is known as a, a fixes bill, whatever they call it, uh, fixes legislation, and, and then they'll approve it. Then it goes to um, the Senate. The Senate will, will pro- hopefully approve it, and then it gets signed by the president. And that's how they do, they do this stuff. By the, and by the way, I want to emphasize something. You know, in terms of tax planning, I was, there's going to be a lot of tax planning tips for this legislation. I mean, I can tell you over the year, uh, tax professionals like myself are going to be staring at this stuff and figuring out all kinds of ways to save money in taxes. Uh, and which, by the way, will also increase the deficit, <laughs> which is another bad thing. But a couple of tax planning tips that I can give you off the top of my head. One tax planning tip is, you know, being a regular corporation has become a real good deal. You know, it, with the, it, it, there, there are problems with being a corporation. There's no question if, because you pay tax on it. And then if you take it back as a dividend, you have another tax. But in the long run, the corporate, the corporation, for give you an example, if you're in a very high tax bracket, if you're in the top 37 percent bracket, believe it or not, paying tax at the corporate rate and then paying yourself a dividend. If you add those two taxes, they come out to be 36 percent. You actually save money doing that than paying tax at the 37 percent bracket. Secondly, you can leave the money in the corporation at 21%. Nobody says you have to take it out. So you can leave a portion of it every single year and start accruing capital. Just designate what you want to use the capital for, and you can do that. And if you end up dying with it, all your heirs get that money tax-free. So that's another benefit. Just you leave your corporation as a tax shelter. Third uh, tax planning tip, this is gonna, I can see this happening. I can just see it. I can see employees going over to their employers saying, wait a minute, we're shafted as employees. We got a great idea. Why don't you treat us as independent contractors and you'll pay my corporation? I can see that happening. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay? That, that I can absolutely see that happening. So there, there's lots of little things. And I'll tell you one other thing. Trump said that there's going to be a lot more jobs created under this tax bill. Yeah, what, he didn't, what, he, what he didn't say, he left out two words. For robots. There will be robots. a lot more jobs. For, yes. For robots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let me explain Artificial why. <laughs> I'm not kidding. If people think when I say that, that I'm, I'm giving a joke here. I'm not kidding, by the way. All right. Um, if, if you fire all your employees, let's take a good example of uh, automobile manufacturers. Manufacturers are perfect in this situation. Um, if, you fire, uh, if you fire your employees and you start putting in lots of robots, uh, part of the tax bill uh, has a limitation. One of the, the limitation is based on how much wages you're paying. Basically, 25% of your wages uh, is a limit to, to how much you can get that 20% deduction for pass-through. Or, and you get 2.5% of any equipment that you use in your business. So if you've got a bunch of robots, that's considered equipment. Hmm. So by having a bunch of robots, number one, you don't have to pay them. You don't have to give them fringe benefits. And they qualify you, if you get enough of them, for that 20% discount on your taxes as a pass-through entity. So hiring a bunch of robots is actually very beneficial under the tax law. The people that really benefit under this tax law, the ideal person, yes, as I said, definitely yes to independent contractors, as somebody said. But the ideal uh, business that really makes out here are manufacturers, especially those using a lot of equipment, heavy equipment. Uh-huh. Trump, Trump himself. Who would have known if I ran for president, I could significantly reduce my taxes? Who would have guessed? Uh, hotel owners, because they have a lot of furniture and things like that and equipment in their business. Uh-huh. Uh, people like that, even a lot of hot, big investors of real estate will also come out ahead in this deal. Uh, the ones who come out a little less ahead, they still win, but a little less ahead are your service oriented businesses, your doctors, your dentists, your, your insurance uh, agents, No, your insurance attorneys. agents, insurance agents. I don't know about insurance agents because they're not included in this. I don't think they're included in this category, but uh, doctors de- generally where the single person's reputation, not the product is, is what the person's buying. So doctors, dentists, uh, athletes. Uh, performing artists, um, that that whole consultants, all that's considered what is known as specified service businesses. They don't come out quite as as well. They do okay yeah. on, on this write off, but they don't as as the income goes up. If it gets over three hundred fifteen thousand married or over um, one hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred single, 
if you're in that service type of business, they phase out this the 20% write-off. So you don't you may not get that if you make too much money. So be yeah. aware of that. Okay. Um yeah, because so a lot those of my, are, those are the kind of implications and some of the tax planning things that's going on with this law. Got it. I, I, I've got some uh, questions here. Um, so, 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 in other words, in this new tax bill, high income employees, doctors, lawyers, those making a hundred thousand dollars or more income, um, you know, if they were just an employee, they never felt a uh, hundred thousand dollars is not a high income employee for this tax law bill. Oh, I for this tax law. Yeah. Um, You're talking probably four hundred thousand. And up. That's good. And up. <laughs> then they're the ones that, that they will not benefit from uh, the 20% discount at all. If they make over $415,000 of net taxable income. But what they will benefit from is being incorporated. If they can go from 37% to a flat 21%, that's one heck of a discount. Then that's either an S Corp or a C Corp. No, regular C Corp. C Corp. Regular C Corp. Regular C Corp. So not not a pass through flow through not S-Corp. a pass through. Got it. Only C corp. Okay. I mean, basically, the top t- individual tax rate has been reduced from thirty nine point six to thirty seven percent. But that thirty seven percent is basically negotiable. That's designed for people who don't do any tax planning, who are employ or those who are employees who can't do anything, and or those that just don't know enough or don't not willing to do anything. Uh, yeah. With proper planning, you should be able to get that right down. What about the sweet spot? Because the sweet spot of the people that's watching the show are those fifty thousand dollars of household income to let's say two fifty, uh, two fifty three hundred thousand dollars household income. That's kind of like the sweet spot of well, everybody. First of all, the, the, here's another thing that's a kind of a pro and con. There's good and bad here. Okay. They've increased the standard deduction okay. uh, for everyone in this country. If you're single, it's going up from sixty three hundred and fifty dollars. To roughly twelve thousand dollars, so the standard deduction is almost doubling for single people. For married people, it's going up from twelve thousand seven hundred to uh, twenty four thousand dollars. Now that's a deduction that we all get. You get that for breathing. Okay. In other words, we not we may not be filing a Schedule A itemized deduction. That's, that's the point. Doing. Now you now you now you're raising the very good point. What happens is that fewer people will itemize, so you don't file a Schedule A. But that also means that fewer people will be taking advantage of um, any deductions for interest on their home and property taxes. They won't be as beneficial because more of that you would get anyway. I'll give you a good example. I mean, here's a very good example of somebody who asked me a question. They wanted to buy a house where they were going to pay about $16,000 of interest every year. Their property taxes are about $6,000. That's $22,000. Uh, they might get some charity and things like that. So let's say twenty-three thousand. Under the old law, you would subtract the sixty uh, uh, three hundred and fifty or whatever the twelve thousand seven hundred itemized deduction, and you basically you deduct the difference as an itemized deduction. There is some phase in some things you have to exceed, but you deduct the difference. Now those itemized deductions don't exceed twenty-four thousand dollars, so they get no benefit from paying the interest and no benefit from paying the property taxes. So what that means. Real estate. And this has, this has to be right. What that means is you're probably going to see real estate values drop. That has to be Ooh. filtered in. That has to be filtered in to what you're getting in tax savings. If you get a 10% drop in your real estate, that might wipe out all your tax savings for the rest of your life. And that's going on for next That's going on for next year. That's not this year. So, right. You got it. Got it. So the, the, the real estate market might be it. So realtors, mortgage people out there, the fact that a lot of them say, hey, Buy a home. Don't be a renter. Be an owner. The benefit of doing that in terms of itemizing deduction or deducting your 1098 mortgage interest deduction. I've been greatly reduced. Because you, you, chances are when they got rid of they, – they also got rid of the state income tax deduction. So unless you've got a heck of a lot of interest uh, and then you can only deduct up to $10,000 of property taxes, it's got to exceed that standard deduction to get one dime of benefit. That's the problem. And it's, it's generally, I think, going to have a very chilling effect on the real estate market. Now, you might want to own a home because, you know, if home, real estate tends to go up in value or having limited land and an increasing population. Uh, you might want to own a home for that reason. Maybe eventually you pay off your mortgage so you won't, you won't have a payment anymore. But from a tax perspective, it's not as good. Yeah, because if you are married and your mortgage uh, interest isn't more than, what was it, did you say $24,000? That's correct. 
Well, not, not just mortgage interest, mortgage interest and property taxes. Right. And if it's not more than twenty-four thousand dollars, you you might as well just you take get no benefit. Deduction. Yeah, there's no. That's benefit. You're exactly right. Wow. And here's my point. Let's my door, my, my a friend that I know would be deducting sixteen thousand. He he would normally be able to have deducted sixteen thousand of interest plus the six thousand in property taxes for twenty-two thousand dollars. But now he's not able to do that. Had he not bought a home, he would still get the same twenty-four thousand deduction, and he wouldn't have the payments of sixteen thousand plus six thousand of property taxes. Yes, he'd have rent, but it may not be as much. So as I said, it's probably going to be a chilling effect on real estate. Um, and, you know, Congress could have eliminated this situation with hearings, because if, if they were at hearings, somebody like me would have gone on and testified. And they said, wait a minute, you're going to kill real estate by 10 percent. Why don't you just phase out the property tax deduction instead of eliminating it? Just phase it out over a period of five, 10 years so people get used to it. It's amazing. Sandy, I got a couple of questions for you. And then I'm going to open yeah. up to you guys. For those of you watching this right now and on Facebook. Somebody, by the way, asked, how, how does this affect student loan interest? What's interesting is they were going to get rid of student loan interest. That was in one of the proposals, but they put it back in the law so you can deduct student loan interest. But again, that's got to be an itemized deduction. If if what you, if, if your interest in charity and student loan interest doesn't exceed uh, $12,000 if you're single or uh, $4,000 if you're married, you won't get any benefit from it. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> that opens up a whole nother conversation. Is it still worth it to go to college? Uh, well, that's, a a whole, that's a whole nother conversation. In the long run, I think, I, I really think in the long run it is. Especially but, but, if you're going to be a. But it is, not, it is not worth it if you've got to take out a high amount of debt. I'll tell you that. Yep. Totally, to, totally agree. Like I'm telling my kids right now, they're juniors in high school. I said, Your grades, baby, your grades are currency. Right. I want that no to question. translate. To, right? Or go to a state university or go to a community college where it's cheap and then go to a state university. That's right. Um, so, listen, Sandy, uh, thanks to entrepreneurship, you know, I was in the Marine Corps for eight years, flat broke. Um, but somebody introduced me not just to the financial services world, not just to the insurance world, which I became, became a part of. But somebody more importantly introduced me to the world of entrepreneurship, free enterprise, capitalism. Is this still an era, 2017 and beyond? Is this Absolutely. still the era to be an entrepreneur? Absolutely. If, if anything, it's more go-go now than ever. If you're, if you're an employee, they're getting rid of the deductions for van pools. So you your employers would sponsor van pools in order to get employees together and lower congestion on their highways. They're getting rid of those deductions. Uh, so now the employer can no longer deduct that. If they want, they can give the, to the employees tax-free, but they don't get a deduction for it. So you can be sure employers aren't going to do that. Uh, or they, or there's another option. The employers can take the deduction and tax it to the employees, which is probably what they're going to do. Uh, another option would be another thing they're getting rid of is free parking. Again, the employers can tax it to the employees and then get a deduction for that. So there's a lot of employees. A lot of employees are not independent contractors. They don't get that 20% deduction if you're a pass-through entity like an S-corp or a sole proprietor or an LLC or a partnership. They're not going to get that as an employee. Uh, if they're, so there's, there's very few ways they're going to be able to reduce their income other than maybe get a side business. And if that business generates a loss, use that against your employment salary. Uh, to be honest with you, if I, if I were to give my recommendation to anyone, I would tell them, forget about putting in overtime, forget about, you know, working like a dog for that boss that is spelled backwards, double S O B. <laughs> but instead, instead, go start up a side business. You might be it'll be subsidized. At least you'll get some losses against your earnings this year, and you'll be able to carry it carry it forward if you have a loss, and and use that money, and maybe make enough money where you can quit that job. Chapter one of your book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time, is why you would be brain dead not to start a home based business. That rule still it. applies. If anything, it's more go go now than ever. Got it. Um, one of my favorite things to do, uh, especially coming from the military, instead of visiting the armpits of the world, uh, I get to now travel the world with my wife because the insurance industry, obviously, and, and the world of entrepreneurship, we take care of our guys and our inventory is people. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Because this is chapter three of your book, how to turn your vacation into a tax deductible write-off. Is, is that still more apparent today, regardless of the Trump tax bill being passed? Yes, that's, that chapter still stays in place full in full. Um, basically, one of the things I mentioned is that if, if, you are, if you are traveling for business, you can deduct 50% of your meals and 100% of your lodging and your other expenses. And that applies for business seminars that you take. 
that applies uh, to, but you can get my book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time and Achieve Financial Freedom on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all these other places. I also have an expense tracking application that I think would be very beneficial yeah. to all of you. It's called TaxBot. T A X B O T. You can download it from the Apple Store, from the Droid Store. It has a, a mileage tracker integrated with a GPS system, which becomes even more important now under the new tax law. Uh, it has expense tracking. Unlike some of the others, this one has expense tracking. It has a camera for your receipts. You take it integrated with a camera, so you, you take a picture and you st everything gets stored on the web. It's a really plus all kinds of education that we're going to be putting in there. So there's a, it's a really good uh, application. It's called TaxBot. But anyway, uh, travel. If you're traveling for a business reason, and that could be to set up referral networks, that could be um, to meet with experts like yourself about what they should be doing with their business. All of that could be deductible. The the the, the, um, the meal, fifty percent of the meals, the housing, all that stuff can be deductible. You just have to document you're doing this for a business reason. Uh, you can also write off all the you know. The, the, and here's one thing that I get a lot of you missed. Not only is your dry cleaning and laundry deductible while you're on a business trip, but as long as they got soiled there, you can clean them anywhere. So your first dry cleaning bill you incur when you get back home is 100% deductible. And I bet your accountants never told you that one, folks. And yes, it's also available on Amazon. My folks, somebody's asking. Definitely, so, we'll, yes. definitely, we'll definitely be putting a link here at the bottom. Yeah. I, by the way, I need to be an Amazon affiliate or something like that. I need to sign up. You, you do. do. That's, That's very true. true. Exactly. And by the way, I do want to mention one more thing about the tax law. That's also very detrimental. You, you read about it, but I don't think really people understand it per se. The tax law eliminated the Obamacare mandate. Now, what that means, let's, let's understand what that means. Uh, people no longer will be penalized if they don't go to the exchanges to buy their health insurance. Or if they buy health insurance that's not of... Um, the minimum standards that was rec that was required by Obamacare, then they don't go to the exchanges. They go, they'll, they'll either drop out or they'll get different insurance. Okay. The, the, the Republican Party, for the most part, is really hoping that is the case because when they drop out and they don't go to the exchanges, they also don't get any subsidies. Got so it. that'll mean less subsidies by the government. So they're really hoping for that. The second thing that'll probably happen is those that do drop out well, not the people who have lots of illnesses and sicknesses and things like that. I mean, they might do that if they have no money, but they're going to stay in the they're going to stay in the exchange. The ones who are do going to drop out if they do are going to be the healthy young ones who feel I'm fine. Yeah. Listen, if I get sick or I'm nil. So what that's going to do is that's going to leave all the older, sicker people in the exchange, which will dramatically raise the premiums, and then there'll be a huge cry. For people to, uh, for to, for Congress to totally re, re, uh, uh, totally change the Obamacare thing, I, mean, you, I guarantee that's what they're thinking. All right, so that's what's going on here, and that's why that was in the tax law. And I definitely see how me being in the financial services world, how that will affect our health insurance agents and health insurance agencies because there's no longer this drive towards the exchanges. That's uh, correct. Totally see that's how that now is. there are there's been a lot of people who've actually been on the exchange recently as a result of that, and I think. They joined the exchanges because they weren't sure what was going on with the tax law. I think somehow they got this feeling that maybe they won't be able to get health insurance as a result of this tax law. There's a, there's a lot of misinformation regarding this tax law bill. I mean, there really is. For example, somebody sent me a question. They wanted to know, can I write off my business deductions, my home office, my stationery, my, um, my phone for business, my computer? None of that gets affected under the tax law if you're in business. None of it. But there's a lot of people who think that it is. Okay? So, as I said, so that's why there's a lot of people joining the exchanges because they don't know that they, they can still join the exchange. The tax law doesn't eliminate that. Uh, but I think you're going to see eventually a reversal. Once, once information like this gets out more and people start understanding what the new law means to them, you'll probably see a number of people dropping out of the exchanges and going to other insurance or even dropping out of the insurance altogether. And then the rates on on the exchanges will be will go out of the sky. Will be astronomical. So, uh, so Sandy, because uh, I remember a couple of years ago we did a campaign across America called Vote 1099, where we're encouraging people to have a home based business. Is again, just to reiterate, Vote 1099 is it still better off today to transition to becoming a 1099 independent contractor 
to then yes. become a full, full blown right. let, me, let me get into that. Uh, first of all, somebody mentioned that the mandate is not completely eliminated. It is going to be eliminated for individuals. It won't be eliminated for companies. They still have to provide health insurance for their people if they're 50 or more people. So I do want to make that clarity. Um, now, in terms of is it, if you're, is it, is it more beneficial now to be a 1099 person to start a business? Absolutely. Remember, this is the go go time. This is this is a Congress. This is a party that wants you to start up a business, and they'll give you all kinds of breaks to start up a business. They'll even go borrow 1.5 billion to start up that business. Now, hopefully, they'll make enough money in terms of improved business to pay off that deficit. But you know what? I don't think it's going to happen. Which okay. means that we're going to have another one to 1.5 trillion. Wow. Okay. So, which, which is, and I, I want to emphasize something here. The third major, in my opinion, the third biggest problem to hit this country after terrorism and cyber terrorism is our deficit. No one is doing anything about the deficit. Nobody's talking about it too much. Congress isn't doing anything. No one is doing anything about the deficit. We are mortgaging our futures. We are mortgaging our kids' futures. We will reach a point where the deficit becomes unsustainable. It is absolutely imperative that we get our congressmen to start paying this thing off and start stop incurring this mad amount of deficit. Think about it. If you are borrowing every single year of your life, yeah, mm -hmm. you'll have a good, you'll have, you'll be able to have a pretty good existence. But at some point, the bill comes due. Then what? And the only the way to pay the deficit down the future is obviously, for, for, if I'm a government, is through tax revenue. And tax revenue, Correct. if you have a pension, if you have a 401k, you have a tax deferred savings. That's a big area where they're going to get a, a big tranche of that. I, I am that absolutely deficit. convinced that in future years, and it won't be that long in the future, probably at the end of the Trump administration. And I think Republicans are, are hoping for this. That's what I think they are. They're going to have to raise taxes in order to start balancing the budget and pay off the deficit. And of course, everybody's going to get upset because they have to raise taxes, which isn't their fault because it was the Republicans that created this situation in part. So now, now we're back to raising taxes and, and I guess Republicans figure they'll get back in again. But that's what's going on here. It is so essential that Congress really take care of the deficit. And I wish, uh, I don't know whether Social Security will be goodbye because Social Security, uh, a lot of these, a lot of these congressmen want Social Security and they have parents that, that are in Social Security. So I don't think you're going to see that. But I think if they'll, they'll certainly raise the Social Security base. So they'll raise enough money to pay for it. But the deficit is a huge, huge issue. And I wish all of you would write letters to your congressman complaining about the fact that, that they're not doing anything about it. So my humble opinion, Sandy, obviously, you, you uh, just I'm thankful that uh, you're in our corner during this live stream. And you've been a resource for me over the years is if you're not controlling your income, because what one thing that Robert Kiyosaki says in his books is the rich don't pay taxes. They use debt as a way to make money. So now is the opportunity for us to really that's, take- That's, control. by the way, that's not true, by the way. That, that's not true. Uh, oh, great, great, uh, great I have some issues with Robert Kiyosaki, but that's not true. Uh, yeah. the, the people, it, it depends on the debt that you have. There's good debt and there's bad debt. Good debt is debt that is used as leverage so you can make, if you can make more money than you're paying in interest. So if I buy real estate, that's giving me 10% return on investment, but my debt is, I'm paying 3% on the debt. That's good debt. That's good debt, right. If I'm yep. buying, if I'm buying a car, uh, that's not, I'm not, and I'm not using, I'm not making money on, or I'm yeah. buying furniture, or I'm buying uh, a 75 inch widescreen television for $3,000 and I'm borrowing the money, that's bad debt. So it that's depends right. on the debt. Okay. He's not exactly right, Kiyosaki, in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. I remember my first flat screen TV was not at my house. When flat screen TVs were coming out, the first flat screen TV was my office, not, not at my house. <laughs> probably. So, that's probably better. Yeah. But at least you could depreciate it. And, and that's, a, that's something that's improved. Oh, by the way, here's another thing they're doing. Um, they're allowing, uh, starting next year, up to a million dollars of write-offs for equipment in your business. So if you want to really expand your business, you want to buy all kinds of desks, you want to buy all kinds of furniture, you want to buy uh, trucks, you want to buy things like that, they're allowing a million dollars to be able to write those things off instead of depreciate that equipment, as long as your total purchases are less than 2.5 million. So that's something that's improved in the tax law as well. Got it. Well, why don't we transit to, Sandy, you've been so, so you know, thoughtful uh, to our watchers and our listeners, uh, viewers and our listeners, why don't we open it up to questions? If you got some questions for Sandy, you, you got some thoughts, some ideas, things that you've been racking your brain, 
please drop your questions on the comment sections below. And uh, as you guys are doing that, I just want you guys to know, thank you for watching. You're watching the Money Smart Guy live stream on Money Smart on Facebook. You're watching this on YouTube at Money Smart Guy. And you listen to the Movement Podcast because we're repurposing this content too as well to make sure you get access to it so therefore you can win the money game. Um, so if you guys got questions about uh, anything regardless, okay, so um, so we got a bunch of uh, uh, questions here. By the way, if you have questions on the new tax reform law, feel free to ask. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say I know everything. To be honest with you, there's so much here, there's probably a lot I don't know. But I'll yeah. try and, if I don't know, I'll tell you, but I'll try and answer the questions that, as you ask. Gotcha. There is one. Uh, okay, so they, they're coming on in. So, um, by the way, if you guys are watching this and you haven't bought it already, make sure you buy Sandy's book, Lawyer Taxes Big Time. I bought this every year since 2009 to make sure that I'm ahead because uh, you mentioned to me when we first met, there's two different types of tax laws. Number one, for those that know, and number two, for those that don't know, those are the two tax systems, right? Somebody asked, right. Somebody asked if there's a new book coming out for 2018. I will be updating it. I haven't updated it yet. But I would say with the exception of the, the entertainment chapter, which deals with um, um, you know, writing off meals and, and entertainment for you know, one-on-one -on -one belly marketing, uh, that part's eliminated. But with that exception, most of the rest of the book is still right on. There may be some number changes, like standard deductions, things like that, but that's still right on. I, okay. One of the things I recommend, for example, hiring kids in your business, that's still beneficial. So all those other strategies are still valid. Gotcha. Here's a question though. What if you own investment properties? Can you wrap the mortgage interest payment property tax? I mean, it's Schedule C filers. Here, no problem here. Absolutely. Not only can you write off uh, the mortgage interest payments and property taxes on invest investment property, but you can also, if you're making a profit, if you have a, an actual positive cash flow, investment property uh, can qualify uh, uh, if you if you if you gross under 157,000 single, 100. 315,000 married for that 20% discount. That's why uh, Corker, Bob Corker, who was against the tax law as a result of the deficit, all of a sudden they put in all kinds of rules to allow investment property to qualify for that 20% discount. And suddenly he changes his mind. <laughs> so, hey, I've always said we have the best Congress and the best Senate that money can buy. Here's another question from Alfredo Garcia Jr., my man out in Ventura, California. Purchase versus lease a new car, what's better for your taxes? Okay, I got a whole discussion on that in lower your taxes big time, so it, it takes a little bit of a discussion. But basically the rule is this. Um, it's in the automobile section. Got it. That's, if you're, uh, basically you should buy a car if you get some tremendous terms, like 0% financing, 0% down. Chapter or, five. Or, right. <laughs> or, um, you, you're going to um, own it for four years or more. In fact, even three years or more. You're generally better off buying. Or um, you, you, you have a truck. If you get a truck, a qualified truck or a qualified SUV because you get a fast write-off, those are the things you want to buy. It also pays to buy if you put on over 30,000 miles per year because otherwise, if you lease with 30,000 miles per year, you've got lease penalties. So when does it pay to lease? Well, it pays to lease under two circumstances. One, you have bad credit. You just got divorced. Your spouse screwed up your credit. Now what? You, you'll find it's easier to lease than it is to buy the car. The second time it pays to lease, if you keep the car for no more than three years, you put on less than 15,000 miles per year. So you don't get those lease penalties. And you don't have one of these heavy metal trucks or heavy metal uh, SUVs. Then it pays to lease. Got it. Very okay. Very clear right there. I, that, that's, it's, it's sort of a summary. I mean, I'm giving you kind of a... A done yeah. branch summary of what I say in my book, but that's kind of it. Gotcha. Somebody asked me to show the book again. Here's Sandy's book, Lawyer Your Taxes Big Time. You can pick this up on Amazon uh, as well. By the way, I am not uh, 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 an affiliate, so this is not a, 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 a sponsored plug. This is a resource I've been using. Uh, listen, guys, I, I, I don't have much of a college degree to speak for. I just, I just know I'm, I'm very thankful for guys like Sandy Bakken, who's generous of his time and the power of social media that just shrinks the world together and makes it a smaller place for uh, and don't people. And forget to get my expense tracking application, TaxBot, T-A-X-B-O-T. If, tax if, you're, if you're in business to make money, you got it. And now it's, it becomes especially important to track your expenses, track your mileage, track it, all those things. You know, that's what business people do. So having a good tax tracker is very, very important. Very good. So uh, okay, here's, I own here's, a duplex. Here's a, here's a yeah. question. Yep. They live on one side and rent out the other. How would yep. you recommend claiming the additional income? Basically, 
you've got, you may have one duplex. It may look like one duplex. You really have two. You've got an income producing uh, property, and then you have um, a principal residence. They, on half of the duplex, you treat it as a principal residence. You write off half of the mortgage interest, half of the um, prop, uh, property, uh, well, mortgage interest, property taxes probably won't exceed your, uh, your, your standard deduction. But the other half is treated like a rental property. And you can write off, depreciate part of that second half of the duplex. You can write off part of the property tax of the second half of the duplex as, an in, as a business expense and, 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 and part of the interest. And by the way, there's one more thing I want to mention. Well, you know, all these things are triggering. I'm going to give you a really, really big tip, folks. This is something I hope everybody's listening. Don't write questions yet because you want to hear what I'm about to tell you. Pay attention. Pay attention. As, you, as you know, and as I just said, Congress eliminated the deduction for state and local taxes. That, that includes sales tax. That includes income tax. And that includes property tax up to $10,000. So you can do $10,000 in property tax. What they didn't tell you, which is still available, is you are allowed to deduct property and sales taxes on things you use for business. So let me give you an example. Let's say I buy a car that I use for business 80% this year. It's a brand new SUV. I use it 80% for business. I can deduct 80% of the depreciation, or I can write off 80% of the cost of the car, 80% of the repairs, 80% of the wash, the wax, the uh, the, uh, the insurance, and 80% of the sales tax. Even though sales tax is eliminated, for most people, it is not eliminated if you pay sales tax on business property. So if you buy a new computer in your business, for example, you can write up the sales tax in that computer. If you buy a whole bunch of furniture in your office, you can write up the sales tax in that office, even though the new tax law says they eliminated the deduction for the sales tax. That only applies to personal type of sales tax. Not business sales tax. Not business. Ah, love it. See, that's, you got to have the right advisors in your corner <laughs> and the right books. Uh, uh, last couple of questions here. Does the new tax bill apply retroactively to 2017 or 2018? No, going it, it generally only applies to 2018. There was one thing, and I can't remember what it was that applies to 2019, but for the most of, for the, for the, for almost all of it, it's 2018, January 1st, 2018. Got it. Very good. Sandy, you've been so generous with your time, man. I just appreciate this conversation. Uh, look forward to connecting with your son. Um, thanks for being such a responsive source to me over the years. And I just look forward to this continuing to develop. Appreciate you big time, Sandy. It is my pleasure. By the way, somebody wrote one last thing about solar upgrades. I think you still get solar uh, discounts. I'm not 100% sure, but I didn't see anywhere in the tax law where they eliminated it. So I still think you still get the solar tax credits. You certainly want to check with your accountant to be 100% sure, but I think you still get it. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming, folks. Absolutely. Hey, guys, listen, I appreciate Sandy Bodkin. And Sandy, listen, uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. My pleasure. It's my honor. Make it to life less taxing this year, folks. Take care. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, listen, I really appreciate Sandy Bodkin for coming on the show. And I appreciate you guys. And uh, if you guys, what is that? Is that snow? Is that snow showing up? Matt, it is here in December. Wishing you guys a very, very Merry Christmas. I appreciate you guys for taking your time and attention to follow Money Smart Guy page here on Facebook for watching us on YouTube and or the replay. I thank you so much for Sandy Botkin for being such a responsive source to all of us. And he's a big champion to helping you guys get ahead financially to make sure that you win the money game by understanding how taxes could be uh, uh, understood by you. Because listen, when I, when I was growing up to, 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 uh, in, in my neighborhoods of Chicago, Listen, I knew how to make money. I knew gross uh, pays on top, net pays on the bottom. I didn't understand the stuff in the middle. How many guys feel that same way? So listen, this is a way for you to understand what the wealthy know about money. So therefore, instead of the rich getting richer, you had that same opportunity to as well. Um, listen, guys, 2018 is going to be a humongous year for you guys. As Sandy had mentioned before, this is go time. This is go time for you guys to be an entrepreneur. Um, I, I couldn't be any more excited right now. Uh, my wife and I here, uh, we're co-owners of PHP Agency, and uh, we're spreading a message of financial hope across America through the Money Smart Movement team. But listen, I couldn't be more excited to have a CEO mentor like Patrick Beth David mentoring us and coaching us to get, take us to the next level, to go from $50,000 a year, $200,000 a year, $500,000 a year, and end up this year at seven figures in income. It just doesn't happen to us because we're, we're, nobody, we're nobody special. We just found the right system, the right culture, the right mentor. And that's you. You said, Matt, listen, 2017, I want to find a financial resolution. What do I do? 
lower your taxes big time. I want to increase my income big time. Connect with us here on Facebook. I'd love to have a conversation with you. 2009, we started with 60 guys. Today, we have over 5,200 agents across America, over 54 offices across America from coast to coast. I'm excited connecting with you. I've, uh, the last two, two months, I've traveled to Boston, to Atlanta, to Jacksonville, Miami, Orlando, San Diego, San Jose, uh, Lake Tahoe, Texas, Houston. We're about to go into, we, we're just about to launch into uh, Austin, Texas. And I want to be able to connect with you guys. I want you guys to feel all alone that you don't have to win this war by yourself. There's some people that can be rallying behind you. So therefore, if you don't have a plan, you don't have people behind you, you don't have a system, we'd love to help you out, win the money game. And obviously a big resource for us is Sandy's book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time. Of course, download his app, TaxBot, TaxBot. And uh, I just want to appreciate you guys. You know, uh, appreciate your comments throughout the whole thing. Uh, Nicole Pacini, um, our, uh, uh, Kimberly Michelle, uh, Andy Corleone, Perla Rodriguez, uh, Ileana Gonzalez, just give me a, co a couple guys, uh, some shout outs here real quick. Uh, Ivan Alvarenga, I appreciate you guys big time too as well. Uh, Jerome Deppner, uh, Semper Fi, that's a veteran entrepreneur there too as well. Aaron Barnes, uh, what's going on Aaron? By the way, Aaron, I just got your package uh, here, your peanut butter, life butter. Appreciate you, Aaron. Good job, man, being a veteran entrepreneur. Uh, JB, appreciate you guys too as well. Jamal Spencer, Merry Christmas to you guys too as well. Uh, and listen, guys, um, I don't know how to I don't know how to tell you this, but this is the era to do some big things as well. So we're, later on today, uh, as soon as this broadcast is over, we're going to select three winners. For those of you who have shared this video, uh, we're going to give you a book from our office, from Amazon to you. Lori Tax is big time. That being said, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Merry, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. God bless you guys. And let's do some big things in 2018. 2018, be one, build one. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.